Hello everybody. So today we are on our second video of Unit 1 and we will talk about evaluation of expressions or more specifically we will focus on real numbers. How do we uh, classify those real numbers, uh, integers or whatever I it has involved. So just as a reminder on the left side once you're done with your video notes you are supposed to work on the worksheets 2.1a and 2.1b. So let's begin the lesson. First thing I'm gonna ask you to write down real numbers and I want you to separate into two boxes because each one of these boxes will rep represent or stay for two different things. So one thing is called rational numbers and the other one is called irrational numbers. So basically real numbers are divided by those two categories. First category has a rational numbers and rational numbers are also known as a fractions or ratios. Um, definitely they could be a whole number, they could be integers, but let's be more specific and describe what each one of those means. So whole numbers are all the numbers that you learn for for first time in your life. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. All the positive numbers. And because it's a whole number, just try to remember letter O, it has involved zero as well. So zero and all positive numbers are called whole numbers integers are those that have negatives, they have zero, they have positives, all of those that go on the number line and uh, are not decimals or fractions is what we call integers. Rational numbers on the other hand are fractions, positive, negative, decimal numbers, repeating um, numbers or numbers that have the same pattern. On the other hand, irrational numbers are the m more, um, not unusual ones, but the ones that we probably, in order to use, we have to use a calculator, we may use them in some advanced examples. So, square root of 2, if you type on the calculator square root of 2, that will be approximately 1.414213 and will continue, it continues forever. So numbers that continues forever, there is no pattern, no repeating numbers, it's just some random numbers, those are what we call irrational. You can't solve that easy because it's just, you know, it goes forever on the calculator. Another one could be negative of square root of number, so in this case square root of 14. Also another popular one is pi. Pi is um, irrational number as well. So by based on this classification I will have some practice for you later and you will be able to classify numbers but let's take a look also of what is a perfect square? What do we call perfect squares? So perfect squares are all the numbers under the square root that could be simplified to a whole number. So square root of 1 is 1 square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16, 4, and so on. And you are familiar with those. Those are what we call perfect squares. And how do we know? Well, square root, for example, of 49 will be 7 times 7 is 49, and when you take the square root, you get one of those. So, you have to be familiar with, because perfect squares are the ones that will help you sometimes to figure out the location of the numbers on the number line. For example, if you look at the very first example, we have graphed the numbers on the number line, complete the segment using less, greater, or equal. So far, you may think that um, the video is going fast, you didn't have time to write everything down, so again, please pause the video, finish your notes, and then continue working with the video. So, focusing on the very first example, we have negative 7 and negative 9, and a number line. So, when you have a number line, you know 0 is always in the middle, all positive numbers are on the left, all negatives are, uh, I'm sorry, all positive on the right, all negatives on the left. 
I want you to place those numbers on the number line. So which one? Negative 7 will be close to 0 or negative 9? Think about that. And you will be right if you say that negative 7 is close to 0 and negative 9 will be a little bit far away. So that shows us negative 9 is less than negative 7 because all the least number are going to the left and all greatest numbers are going to the right so in this case negative 9 is going to the left it's before on the left side negative 7 which makes it smaller number second number line we have negatives positives 0 in the middle so we have to compare which one is this? Is, is 0 greater or less than negative 4? Well, again, negative 4 will be, let's say, somewhere here on the left side. For sure, 0 is greater than negative 4. Another example, we have negatives here, positives over here. So negative 2 is close to the 0, negative 6 is a little bit far away. So the, what that means, it means that negative 2 is greater than negative 6, or if you have to read it from left to right, negative 6 is less than negative 2. I hope this makes sense. If not, let me know how I will be helpful for you during class time. So I'm going to move to the next page and we're going to take a look of some other examples. Example number two. Tell whether the decimal representations repeats or terminates. So one-third and five-tenths. Let's take a look of the second one, five-tenths. If you think about how do we simplify that, let's first check and see. Okay, 5, How can we fit 5 into 10 and how many times? It goes twice, exactly twice. So 5 tenths is also equal to 1 half. But what do we know about 1 half? 1 half is equal to what? It's equal to 0 0.5. So that will be the whole answer. We have a decimal number, no repeating, no terminating numbers, no continuing numbers, just 0 0.5, that's it. But if you look at one third, and I would say at this point, use the calculator and write, uh, type the numbers as a fraction. And instead of fraction line, I want you to use division. So it will be one divided by three, and this will give us, look at the calculator. 0 0.33333 so definitely that 3 repeats so I'll put 0 0.3 repeating and we'll represent the numbers and let's review when we have a repeating numbers or just a decimal this is what we call rational numbers so in the next example we have given square root of 8, negative 0 0.4, negative 1, 0 0.5, pi over 3, square root of 1. And we're asked to tell whether each number is a real number, rational, integer, or whole number, or irrational. So let's put those numbers on the right spot. Square root of 8. Square root of 8, so I'm going to use the calculator to show you. And square root of 8 is equal to this number 2.82842725 and we mentioned that if you have continuing number like this no repeatings nothing quite just a random numbers that means we have irrational number so square root of 8 I'm gonna place that number under this part oops sorry irrational not integer square root of 8 will be here under a rational section. Negative 0 0.4. Negative 0 0.4 is a rational number. It's not an integer. It's not a whole number. It's not... It is a real number. Actually, all of those are real numbers, so every single number needs to go into this column. And I will just cross out this, cross out this one, I'm done with those. Then I have negative 1. Now, some of the numbers could go to a couple 
different categories. For example, negative 1 is an integer, but negative 1 also is a rational because you can write this as a negative 1 over 1, right? It will be the same thing. So it is rational, integer, and real number as well. 0 0.5 is rational 0 0.5 0 0.5 here that's all pi over 3 will be um, irrational pi over 3 irrational and real number as well and the last one is square root of one, 1 well let's use the calculator so you can see square root of 1 is equal to 1 so that number actually could be an integer, it could be rational, and also could be a whole number, because whole numbers are all positives and zero. And I'm going to put square root of 1 over here. All right, so we know all rationals and rationals numbers, and the final thing, we want to order the numbers from least to greatest. So let's take a look and which one will go first. We have negatives and also we have positives. So negative 0 0.4 or negative 1. Well, negative 1 will be the first one that will go. Then we, we will have negative 0 0.4 then will be square root of 1 because it's just 1 square root of 8 I showed you it's approximately 2 point something so after square root of 1 we're gonna have square root of 8 and then what else do we have oh we did not calculate pi let's uh, pi divided by 3 so pi I will just use 3.14 3.14 divided by 3 and this is 1.05 approximately so pi over 3 will be between those two so I'm gonna put pi over 3 here and square root of 8 over here and pretty much I think that's all yep that's all and we are done with ordering next thing that we wanna take a look will be simplifying the expressions. So how do we simplify uh, expressions and specifically when we have uh, absolute value numbers? Well, first thing you guys know no matter what number we have inside the absolute value, it could be negative or positive, the answer will always be positive. So absolute value number is always positive. So if I have absolute value of negative 32, the answer will be positive 32. Now what happened here when we have a negative sign outside of the absolute value, we still need to keep that negative sign. And then we say absolute value of 9 is 9. So this answer will be negative 9. When we have parentheses, not the absolute value sign, and two negatives are touching each other like that, they change again to plus sign. So this will be number 5 here. If I have one negative, negative 20, well that will be just negative 20. Next example, we have absolute value of negative 17 and a negative sign outside of the absolute value. So this negative sign goes over here and then absolute value of negative 17 is just 17. So final answer, negative 17. Absolute value of 4 is positive 4 and we are done. Final review of all the skills that you learned last year it will be to evaluate expression when x equals 6. So this expression I'm gonna substitute 6 and I will say 2 plus and we have minus 6 over here you substitute x variable with the number so 2 plus negative 6 final answer will be negative 4. For the second example I will have absolute value x is 6 plus 5 
equals the absolute value. So this will give us absolute value of 11 and the absolute value of 11 will be positive 11 final answer. All right, well, uh, that is the end of today's video. So have a great day, everybody, and we'll have questions during class time. Thank you for watching the video.